So welcome everyone and it is April the 6th. This is a call I set back in the end of 2019. Strengths and focus virtually. I didn't know that it would probably have so much resonance but it's good to be back on a Monday for our call and really today wanted to stimulate a conversation around strengths and so I'm bringing a little bit of content from a couple of different places and we've still got people joining us. So we are recording this and if you can join me in times, I will be continuing these Monday morning calls, usually 11 to 11.30 Eastern. I'll talk a little bit more about upcoming calls for the month of April. But today I'm pulling from a couple of different places. So I'll be talking about strengths in the virtual space and I'll be sharing some of the research uh, I dipped into about three years ago in effective virtual conversations. We'll talk about what are the strengths we see leaders and professionals needing in this remote space. Then we're going to move into a bit of a section which is going to get you thinking about your strengths because at times of disruption, what happens? We tend to lean into our strengths. So it's really important that we are aware of what are the strengths we're bringing to the table. Twofold. One, we may be using them well and we might be over leveraging them. So with that, I'll invite you to just share with us in chat uh, what's brought you here. I've got a bit of a warm up exercise in just a moment, but I'd like you to think about your strengths right now. Like as you look at your work right in this moment in time, what are the, the couple of strengths that are helping you do your best work? And I'll get you to just turn to chat and let us know what's helping you thrive or even survive in this moment in time. Just turn to chat and I'll read through the list. I won't give your name, but I'll just read through the list. What I've been interested in, and I've been asking this question quite a bit to business owners and leaders, as well as coaches, and I've been hearing strengths ranging from uh, my ability to focus, <laughs> my ability to pivot, my ability to innovate and be creative, uh, for me, myself personally, I, I think my routine and my work ethic has really helped keep things going. And, and of course, I worked for many years in highly disruptive, turbulent environments. Um, but knowing that, you know, I thrive best if I have some structure. And so that might be in contrast. I love seeing, you know, for some it's downtime and rest. For others, innovation, resilience, agility as strengths and working across differences. And differences are big in, in the current space. And, you know, we may be building some skills as well as we get going. Other comments here, appreciating and acknowledging what is good. Absolutely. How are we taking moments to be grateful? How are we focusing in on what works for us and what self-care habits and tools are available? I also love seeing from Jennifer G, positivity. In fact, my local community has just uh, assigned a chief positivity officer for the community. I live just on the boundaries of a place called Newmarket, Ontario. You can look it up. And so they've got a chief positivity officer to keep this little town of 100,000 moving along. Others have noted also the beliefs and futuristic strength. That's so key. And as is, as is another group member, futuristic strength. That is a phrase for me. Would love to hear more. So we're going to dip into all of these. And I'll, I'll invite you right now, like looking at remote work and what we know about excelling in the remote space. We know that people who excel in this space are great at building relationships, great at building trust great at connect, creating connection, whether it's across a team or with your clients or with your stakeholders. It is also about being clear and intentional. And I love that for many of you in your comments, you shared the importance of intentionality, as well as this ability to work across differences and intercultural know-how. And intercultural, we often think is like another country, but like even across our own countries, whether it's Canada, the US or other, you know, there are very unique ways in how we like to work and communicate. Two more skill sets that are important in the remote space are that of innovation. And I, again, we're seeing some really creative, innovative ways to meet current challenges from business, as is this whole skill set of resilience and agility. We could actually do a call on one of any of these, probably spend nine different sessions. In fact, here, 
on my Monday calls, I've dipped into several of these. But with these remote strengths in mind, I'd like you to think about which ones are your current opportunity to build. Okay, so what could you build more of? And I'll get you just because it's, it's interesting, rather than go to chat, let's get you to annotate. Let's see, get your pens moving. I'll get you to just pick up your annotate pen, which of course is found at the top of your screen. You'll probably see you're viewing Jennifer Britton's screen. Once you click on that, you'll see either annotate or view options. If you just see view options, click view options and down will come your annotate button. You'll need to then click annotate and then you can circle. So what is the muscle? What is the one that you wanna build a little bit more of? And this goes like counterintuitively because in fact, a lot of the early research by Gallup found that it's easier for us to build our strengths, magnify them, than to mitigate against our weaknesses. So I'll say that again. Gallup found that it's easier to build onto our strengths that are good than to mitigate against our weaknesses. What's a challenge in the remote space though is if we're a solopreneur, we need to be good at most, if not all of these. So how do we bring those on to our team? How do we get better at them as well? So notice in our group here today, uh, building relationships, so key, intentionality, working across differences, and then creating connection amongst our team, creating connection with others. And my hope is that today, maybe we'll do a little bit of a breakout um, and you can connect in with another one or two people to talk about your strengths. That way you can like magnify the energy behind your strengths. So thanks for sharing. As we get into this, I'll get you to erase it. It's easier for you to erase it than for me to do that. Just look to your annotate line and you can clear your drawings. If you have a bit of background noise, I'll get you to also just do a quick mute on the line as well. So we'll clear those. All right. So past calls, if you're interested, I've been doing a lot of calls. <laughs> I've been doing these now for three years, every, every few Mondays, sometimes three, four times a month. The last call I think many of you will like to see, which is called What, So, What, Now, What? Experiential Processes in Remote Spaces. So there is a bit of a fallacy that, you know what, we can't do anything active, we need to keep sitting. For most of us moving into week four of working this way, you're probably hungry to be able to get up and move. So the call of, uh, it was, I should have put the date, it was the March 2020 Effective Virtual Conversations call. If you head on over to my YouTube channel, just click in what, so what, now what, experiential processes. You'll see two different recordings, one from about 10 years ago, which is two minutes. You'll notice my haircut then. And then this longer one, which looks like this, but please dip into it because most of you are facilitating amazing conversations right now in terms of you know, helping teams, helping organizations think about what's next and helping them make that transition. Final piece that I want to mention before we get into some more content is just there's another recording that I think people will want to dip into, which is known as No Person is an Island. And several of you identified relationship development, as well as your ability to connect others or connect with your team. I think that's another call if you have time. These are all just about 30 minutes each. And that was the February call from this year, which is really key. How do we, how do we build onto it? Because when we talk strengths, lots of different layers here. We could look at today's call through our lens and that's where we're starting. But chances are you as a coach are gonna be leveraging client strengths and working with your clients, whether they're an individual, whether they're a team or whether they're an organization. And in the last few weeks, I've been doing a lot of work here at this organizational level, stimulating conversations of varying types with large groups. So I've shared with some of you, you know, some of the calls that I've done recently are like 80 people. So how do you ensure engagement across a group of 80? But we need to look at strengths at all these levels. And I'd like to invite you after today's call to think about how you might also scale your work because it's not just the one-on-one, -on -one, it can be upwards to the organizational level. So here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna actually go to breakout. And I love this question. If I were to describe myself as a superpower, it would be. 
I'd like you to think about what your greatest strength is and because I could see some of your faces. I love seeing the smile that that brought out. I'm going to uh, do a little quick breakout right now. So um, again, we'll put you in groups of threes so that it's a little bit more comfortable. And I'd like you to do two things. So first of all, share with your partners what one of your superpowers is. And to this next piece, to experiential, based on your experience, with your skill and strength, what can you be doing to expand on your experience base in terms of what you can bring to your clients? So let me maybe reframe that a little better, like share your superpower and then think about, you know, what does that allow you to bring to your clients? So one of my strengths is learning, <laughs> no surprise. And uh, this is what I bring. I bring a conversation spot where people can connect, where people can learn, and hopefully that will inform action. So I'm gonna put you into breakout. We'll take just four minutes, really quick, but I'd like you to introduce yourselves to the, your partners just by saying one of my superpower strengths is and how I can magnify that to impact clients is blank. Clear as mud? Four minutes is what you're gonna have. You'll have about a minute a piece. And most of you know how breakouts work. If this is the first time in breakouts, you will simply be shifted over into that space and the system will bring you back. So we'll have one room of, uh, one room of two, a couple rooms of three and it will bring you back. So what's your superpower? And then also, what can you do to magnify that? I'm gonna open the rooms, have fun, four minutes. You can accept join, and that will take you to your breakout room. All right. And Marty, if you, hopefully you'll see a little something on your, on your screen, or you can stay here with me if you'd like. Okay, there we go. So what I'll say is with this, there's a whole body of research and that is uh, the Gallup organization. There's Marty, you stayed with me, Marty. Do you, do you wanna have a conversation about your strengths while you remain here? You can, or you can just sit. What would you like to do, Marty? Hi, Marty. All right, I'm gonna just share a little bit more about the Gallup research. Unless, would you like to talk about what your superpower is, Marty? And I'm thinking your connection speed might be slower. Can you hear me, Marty? All right. Can you hear me? Very slowly, so I'm gonna, invite you to turn off your can, video. Can you hear me? I can hear you now. I can hear you now. The speed is a bit slow, right? So Marty, try that again. What is your superpower? And if you can hear me, tell me what your superpower is. All right. Well, hopefully I'm coming through okay. Oh, go ahead, Marty. Can you hear me? Not very well. So what I'll get you to do is chat with me. Go to chat. And no. hopefully you can see where the chat is. The connect yeah. speed seems to be slow. How do I do that? Okay, you know what? You're speeding up now. So Marty, yeah. quick, superpower. What's your superpower? Can you hear me? No. I have to move next time. Yeah, your speed is cutting in and out. But can you, do you want to share it on chat or do you want to share it verbally? I'll get you to type it if you can on chat, which is down on your bottom bar. So when I say bottom bar, it's down by the mute and the video. You should, should see chat there. All right, there you are. Okay. 
I see you now, Marty. So I'm gonna give everyone just a minute left. I'm gonna bring everyone back. That's our four minutes. I'm gonna to go to our breakout rooms. I'll take a minute to get back here. And I can see that your chat has come in. So let's go to what that says. Okay. <laughs> All right. Some of us are back. Hey, welcome back. So Jennifer, Georgian, anything to share on that? Was it fun? I see you're smiling as usual, which is what always happens. What was that like, Georgian, to talk about your strengths? Um, it was interesting because um, uh, it was Jennifer's strength was compassion. And I know I have compassion, but it wasn't front and center for me. So it, it kind of just made me think about it. Uh -huh. what she's bringing yeah how about you jennifer what was important in that that quick touch point with george ann me jennifer yes you jennifer g oh i was with kathy oh you were with kathy oh. okay so you were with melissa oh, no, i was with melissa i'm sorry i was with melissa where's melissa melissa's there hey melissa i don't see melissa that's why it's yeah so again on zoom you can usually only see about four or five people uh, sorry okay. melissa <laughs> your, your compassion showed through. So, Melissa, anything you want to share about just the, the benefit of speaking to strengths, right? Like, it can be really magnifying. Um, can you hear me? Yeah, we can. Go ahead, Melissa. Okay. Um, yeah, yeah, just like, um, it's like affirmation, I, I believe. And I, I mean, the other day I was on the phone with a patient and I just started to cry because he has cancer. And I'm like, you know, that's a hellish thing to have during normal time. And so, you know, and I don't have to call, but I'm going to call him today because he gets his test results. I want to know how he's doing. And so, I mean, that's just, um, anyway. So, yeah, yeah. I mean, I know that, you know, I just got teary eyed because I felt so bad for him. So, and he can't see me because I'm on the phone, but that's okay. It's like he, I could, you know, you can feel people on the phone, even in their voice and the tenderness. So. Um, and that to me is enough sometimes for people to know that you care. Absolutely. And now that I see Melissa, I know it's Missy. Hey, Missy, good to have you here. And compassion, that is, that is one of your strengths. So, so Jennifer G and Kathy V, sounds like you were also paired. What was interesting in your little touch point? Um, I think, again, it's just, it's that um, cultivating and, and putting into words what is there already so for me um, input is actually number five but um, just realizing that I have a lot of resources that are that could be very helpful to people right now um, around self-care and emotional and mental and physical well-being and um, and strengths so just putting those resources to good use um, to help people know that there's tools out there that they can use Absolutely. And if it's your strength, like really now is the time to bring it on, right? This is what yeah. we do want to dial up, right? And I, I have this little slide here, dial up or dial down. And I think this is where we want to ask for feedback. Am I over leveraging it or do I need to even take it up? Like, do I need to put the volume to an 11? <laughs> Crank the knob off as we used to say in my former world of work. So Kathy, how about you? Anything you want to add from your perspective about what was useful to talk about your strengths or where you want to take your strengths? Yeah, a little I bit mean, more? I know I have a lot to offer. I don't always feel appreciated. So I think it's just really just reconnecting with, yes, I, I am a creative person. I can pivot pretty quickly in the moment. I do follow through. I might not be the day in, day out person. Um, that may not be my strength, but I am the search capacity person. So yeah. I will push it over the line. And right now, some people need to be pushed a little bit out of their comfort zone. Like don't send the email tomorrow for something on Wednesday. Let's send it today for Wednesday. Um, even if we don't have all the information, let's at least save, save the date today on Monday for Wednesday, not Tuesday, like Tuesday morning, when we get the email. 
And okay. to your point, like, you know, if we're part of a team, how do we leverage those skills? Teams that excel have multiple strengths. If we're yep. too similar, we're creating a huge amount of blind spots. So, you know, here's a, here's a bit of an inquiry and an inquiry, of course, being that question that you might want to think about, like thinking about your strengths right now, whether it's input, whether it's like putting things over the line, what can you create with your strengths and what can you create with your strengths in terms of something of value to your business, to the people you serve? Is it an article? Is it a podcast? Is it like creating a new community? You know, creativity is such an important skill at this moment in time. And I don't know if ever again, there will be a moment where so many people are online <laughs> with some with not a lot of things to do. And so how can you open a window to, you know, what you do as a coach, what you do in your work, what value you bring? And that's, a, again, an inquiry. You don't need an answer in the moment, but I think there's a piece of this that we hopefully are able to do and do more of what we are great at. So if we have a strength around speaking, how do you do more of that? If you're really good at bringing people together, maybe you're a relator, how do you bring people together? So I want to share a couple Jennifer, more things. Jennifer, can I just ask something? What if you're finding that, the, like, what if you're finding that your strength is undervalued in your profession, but Mm. valued elsewhere well I think that's a signal for change perhaps you know one of the reasons one of the many reasons I went into my own business was because I loved creating right and I've been a create a program creator all my life um, I found for many years that I was you know my my skills were not being tapped on I was you know not able to innovate the way I wanted to and that was one of the precipitating factors years ago to say, you know what, it's time for me to make this shift. Uh, I knew there was a lot of risk in starting a business back then and moving countries and moving continents. It's a lot on the line, but I got to the point where I needed to do more of on a regular basis of what I was great at. So I don't know if that helps, Kathy. It's never easy, but I think there is a point at which, you know, we can we, we do to really be satisfied and have that quality of life. We do want to make sure that we are doing as much as we can. And I've seen this just sharing here a quick like snapshot. Um, if any of you have a copy of coaching business builder or plan do track part of section four is all about your unique ecosystem of which, you know, to have a healthy forest, to have a healthy tree, we need to be able to leverage our strengths. We need to also be very confident in what we take a stand for. And for each one of us on today's call, that's, that's different. We also need to be true to our values, right? Like our values are like roots. And if our values are not getting deeply enrooted, we may be like a tree in a rainforest, right? I worked in the rainforest for many years and, and trees look great, but they only are strong because of the people around them. And so we do want to be very aware of our ecosystem in terms of, you know, how does this make us unique, even if we're part of a team? How does it help us ground ourselves in times of challenge? And the top branches here, the, the sort of the leaves on the tree are really the opportunities. Why I share this is because right now as remote workers, right, we, along with people we support, are on their own, but they're hungry for a bigger connect in the ecosystem. So Jen G, I know you've got your raised hand. I love this functionality. Let's go over to you. Question, comment? Just a quick question. Um, how would you differentiate what you stay, take a stand for versus your values? Well, I, I sort of like the values are like wide cross sectoral, right? Like I have a value of quality. I have a value around integrity, but I do take a stand for things like in, inequality, inequity. And, and the stand is like, these are the things that get me even more, <laughs> like more embroiled than my values. Like values can get trampled on to a certain extent, but like a stand, I take a stand for excellence and equity. That is just, it has shown up in my entire life and it is what will move me. And it also is what, you know, helps to be like a trunk of a tree, an anchoring factor. So I may not communicate it. It's an, an interesting question because I probably don't communicate my stand as much as I do my values. 
but if you ever hear me and my voice is wavering, if you ever see me go really red, chances are people have hit my stance. <laughs> so I don't know, that's one perspective. I don't know, how do you see it, Jen? Yeah, I, you know, I, I wasn't sure. And so that's, that helps to, um, yeah, like the, my values are very personal to me. Um, I do want to protect them. Right. But like you said, sometimes I'm willing to give because you know, the greater good kind of thing. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, but the, the, what you stand for is almost like it's, um, just how you described it. It's like, there's no, there, I'm not bending on this. Yeah, kind of it's a line in the sand, right? Yeah. Like that's another analogy, but it's like the tree of the trunk. Mm -hmm. So like why I do what I do to have excellent conversation, have equity and in equity, it's like, that's why I'm a group coach. I wanna hear everyone's voice, even the unpopular voices in the room. It's important that we're not silencing people. So think through, and again, that might be a very interesting, I'm glad you brought this question up because along this whole, this whole range is like, yeah, what are the areas we're not as attuned to? Our trees, like the, the growth on the trees outside my window, like the little buds are starting to peek out. But like opportunities today are not the same opportunities that were there a month ago, right? A hurricane has literally ripped through. And so what are we noticing about new opportunities that are coming to the surface? So again, more on this in either Coaching Business Builder and Plan Do Track. And because the printing presses are now being diverted for PPE, for personal protective equipment, which is good, you can pick up a copy. If you don't have a copy, you can go to um, the Potentials Realize store and you can download a PDF copy and print it out at home. So that's in section four. I continue, and I won't take a long time because I know we said we'd wrap up by 1130, but you know, I'd also like you to think about well, how can you be bringing this into the work that you do with teams and organizations? Because our strengths allow us to run. They allow us to run quickly. They can, as I said, be the things that we over leverage. But really right now in emergency and crisis, like how do we help people connect on an individual and a team level? And what you see on the wall here is Gallup's um, Strengths Finder. That's a very visual way of working with strengths when I'm with people in the room. And it is just another way you could recreate this in the virtual space. You could have little boxes and have people identify what their strengths are. These are the 34 buckets. So I know some of you have to run now, but thank you for being here. And I'll just sort of go to wrap up our call and just uh, getting you to think about your strengths and also to think about how you're gonna leverage these. That was really the work we did in Breakout. I hope you enjoyed that conversation. Coaching is not just about awareness, it's also about what next. And so think about what you could be doing to either pass this skill on to other or to really be getting clear on what you wanna create in your work. I am back next week and next week's topic. Let's see if I've even put it. I haven't put it here. So next, next week's topic. Let me go to my list and that will help us identify. Um, I've written it down and it's not here, but be back next Monday. If you want on the 20th, it's about myths for virtual remote work. Oh yes. Next Monday actually is going to be a program hack. So from 11 to 1130, if you want to be designing a new program, join me for half an hour with a pen, with an idea, and we will breathe some life into the skeleton of that at 11 a.m. next Monday morning. Lots more tools that you can dig into. Let me know how we, plural, as a business can support you, and most importantly, how will you pass this on. So with that, thank you, Marty. I'm glad that you came. You too, Missy and Jennifer. What was valuable? If you have another minute, what was valuable for spending 30 minutes here to look at strengths today? And I'll start with Marty. We'll see how Marty's voice is. Or Marty, you can try chat again. If you know it's She's well. muted. She is muted, Jennifer. She's muted? Okay, Marty, yeah, you're muted. So I'll go to Missy. Missy, you seem to, I can hear your voice. What was valuable being here today? Um, I really like your ecosystem analogy. I mean, I could have stayed there the entire time. <laughs> And, you know, you talk about what you take a stand for. And for me, that would be, that would be termed as conviction. Yes. In, the, in the church, that's called conviction. Conviction. And so, um, anyway, I appreciate you um, emphasizing, again, I could have stayed on that slide. <laughs> you 
Yeah. That's your strength, right? <laughs> and, and it's a great coaching conversation, right? Anything that we've touched on today is a great coaching conversation. So Marty is, uh, or someone chatted. Yeah, so next week, next time, come on back and hopefully you will join us with a program in mind. Jennifer, what was the value of spending 30 minutes looking at this? I know that you're a strengths coach, so this is an area you get to look at regularly. What did you enjoy out of today's call, Jennifer? Two things, the breakout, just having to articulate my strengths, it's always helpful um, to engage the brain in that way. And then the second thing is that slide about the ecosystem and um, just that question, getting clarity around what do you stand for? Um, because I really feel like it gets to the heart um, and, and there's, there's passion there. Um, and, and it's a great for me, but also to use with my clients. Um, it's a great guiding star kind of thing. So absolutely. Well, thank you all. Have a wonderful week, a good Easter, and hope to see you again next Monday. And if not, I'll be here the Monday after that, looking at the 20th at Myths around virtual and remote work and teams. Be well, everyone. Take care. See you. Bye. Bye.